It's 8 o'clock, you're watching GH Today, and this is a Hard Talk Part 2. My name is Kafi Day, and with me I do have the Honourable Member of Parliament for the Keta constituency, Sir Richard Maoli Kwashigan. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to, good to see you. It's good to see you. Okay. Seeing you for the first time this year. This year. Happy New Year to you. Same to you, and um, excited to have uh, met my nephew also working here, Daniel Koshiga. Yes, a great guy. Great. Great guy. The last time I spoke to you, you were on the majority. This time you are in the minority. How does it feel? Well, um, of course, um, it's just dawning on us that indeed we are in the minority. Um, and it, it's a mixed feeling, to put it that way. Um, the way you carry yourself as a party in government is no more same. And um, this time around, it is for you to actually ensure that those who are in the helm of affairs, you know, get to do the job rightly by holding their feet to the fire and assuring that um, you critique all that they do in the interest of Madagana. Previously, you got to be on the defense whatever government does. As a member of parliament and a member of the NDC, you tend to defend it. Sometimes defending the indefensible, however um, unpleasant it might be. You know, uh, but this time around, the rules are reversed. So, well, we're doing what we can in the interest of Madagana and those that we represent. Have you taken the defeat now? Yes, of course, now we have. Now we have, and uh, especially that you find your friends and colleagues um, who are in some positions being compelled to resign, some forced to go and proceed on leave, you know, and um, where, you know, as a result of the change, others would want to make you feel insecure, which ought not to be, you know, and it really brings to mind a certain statement made by uh, Honorable Cospio Gabra, that opposition is like being in hell, you know. Uh, so we, we're taking it in our strides. And that is what is going to compel us more as a political party to work our way back into government in 2020. Because um, obviously it is clear that those to whom we have handed over the man mandate of governance don't appear to have the temerity, the tenacity of purpose, you know, to hold dear that which the Ghanaian um, uh, cherish, that is peace, safety, you know, and a secured Ghana. Within three months, we are witnesses to very unpleasant and horrendous threats on lives and property, um, the creation of fear and panic. Uh, across the nook and cranny of our beloved country. And I, I think that I'm very convinced that the Ghanaian who voted the way they did are beginning to have a change of mind. Why should the Ghanaian listening, listen to you? You are in hell and the, the other guys are in heaven. No, well, when I say opposition bill, uh, <laughs> is like being in hell. Mm. Are you in hell? No, no. <laughs> It's a figure of speech. Yes, but do you like feel like, do you feel, is it hot, I mean, in opposition? Um, to an extent, when you consider the happenings around you, when you reflect on the excesses in terms of insecurity, when you think of how various vigilante groups consciously um, are created by those in the helm of affairs, are, be are becoming a nightmare to the ordinary Ghanaian and the daily uh, freedom that we cherish. That obviously could be compared to being in hell. Latest news is that um, 
13 Delta Force members have been fined 31,200. The chaps who went um, uh, attacking the president's nominee for the regional security post in Kumasi, in Ashanti region, the president has condemned it. Um, so many organizations, including your party, have condemned the actions of these people. Are you just not stretching things for political capital? Richard, I'm sure you know too well in your very hearts of hearts that I'm not stretching this matter, and that is the reality. Since the very day that Nana Kufaru took over the reins of governance um, some three months ago, we saw an upsurge of vigilante groups in the name of the president to the extent that even a senior police officer, Mr. Nanka Bruce, was actually manhandled right in the seat of government where the president actually operates from. Uh, condemnation from the president was not forthcoming. Reluctantly, as a result of pressure from various quarters of our society, he sort of gave a certain, um, uh, came out in a certain fashion. Uh, uh, Half-heartedly, we accepted that with the belief that his promise of ensuring a safe Ghana, safeguarding the rules and laws of our country are things that he was going to hold here. But what did we see? From the 7th of, Je 7th of January till now, these actions of rampaging MPP youth, so-called um, Delta Force, um, Invincible Forces, Bulgar Bulldogs, uh, name them, had been on the rampage, irrespective of uh, some um, um, per perceived condemnation of their actions from some leading members of their parties. I'm sure you will recall that even the chief of staff, the current chief of staff, when she condemned a certain action of theirs, they got back at her. You, you saw recently the, the Minister of National Security being verbally abused, verbally assaulted, and threatened as a result of his condemnation of these actions. And, and, so, and so NDC has made uh, lots of calls. You have held the president responsible for this vigilante action um, that is going on, I mean, your party. Your party has also called for the arrest of the, your colleague in parliament, uh, Kennedy Ajapong, the MP for Asin Central. Uh, your party is even asking for the United Nations to declare your colleague um, a terrorist. Do you associate with those well, views? Well, um, Honorable Kennedy Ajapong is a friend of mine. Yes. And, um, but your party wants action to be taken against him. Well, that could, that could be a party position. But again, also, I think that um, Honorable Japan is one person who we all know, you know, has gone on this path for, for a long time. I, as a friend, had even had the opportunity to, you know, brotherly advise him that I think that he's a fine gentleman, honestly, when you meet him one-on-one. -on -one. But then when a microphone is before him, he becomes a different animal, you know. Um, of course, as a result of a certain relationship that has developed um, by being in parliament and being on the same com committee and um, belonging to the same esprit de corps in some respect, uh, it's very difficult to say that, well, they, he should be arrested and be treated as a terrorist. But I think that his actions are becoming unbecoming and uh, it's time for him to sit back and reflect because even within his own party, uh, people are complaining. You want the president and you want the MPP to dissociate themselves from the Delta forces. But you don't want to dissociate from your colleague who you say is a different <laughs> animal when a microphone is thrust under his nose or under his lips. Yeah, is there, yeah. Don't you see a contradiction there? Well, a contradiction, you may call it. It's just like um, you, Kafi Debi, my brother, and if you do the wrong thing and you run into problems, obviously, um, um, uh, as a result of that affinity, you know, and relationship, that brotherly relationship, I, 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 I will be touched. And uh, I mean, you can compare that to the story of David and Absalom. Absalom, the son of David, obviously misbehaved, went way, um, um, uh, haywire, and lived to the extent that he wanted to overthrow his father. But then, what happened? His father, the same father that he overthrew, pleaded that, please, they should handle the, the young man Absalom gently. You know, so I mean, the human feeling and uh, association sometimes creates that. Yeah, just like how if even your son is, is caught 
<laughs> in some uh, dastardly acts, which will require that it must be dealt with um, in no certain terms. You, you have, as a father, will have a certain... So privately, have you condemned Mr. Japon in his face? Oh, no, no, I have. I mean, if he would be honest with you or any other person, I have on more than one occasion told him that, look, I think his actions are just off, way out of the roof, uncalled for, unnecessary, which could actually um, um, lead this nation in a wrong direction. Because, you see, I have even told him that, look, he is a fine gentleman, uh, such that if uh, not given to those actions of his and behaviors in public and et cetera, he could even one day become the flag bearer of the MPP. But with all these behaviors, I don't think that Ghana will be safe should he, in the most unlikely event, become leader of the MPP and most especially even the president of Ghana. Let's move away from Mr. Kennedy in Japan. <laughs> Let's talk about um, comments that are coming from so many quarters. So the Coalition for Domestic Election Observers and the National Commission for Civic uh, Education says all vigilante groups should be disbanded. Not just the, the ones under the MPP, but those under the NDC. But I'm just curious, where are your guys, though? We are the vigilante groups that, uh, that belong to our uh, affiliated to the NDC. I mean, you don't can have you recall? Them? You know, there was this talk about the Azoka boys some years back. Okay, but the Azoka boys, really, you cannot um, confine them to a vigilante uh, description. They are, okay, they are party activists and they work, they do dirty work for them. They NDC. don't do dirty work. What kind of work would you refer to as dirty that uh, the Azoka boys have done? You In know, intimidating people so that they don't, they don't, they protect your vote. <sighs> That's what these people do. It's no. documented everywhere no. that you, all the political parties, the two main political parties have people like this we, on their we, books. We, we, some years back, I've talked about the Azoka boys. Okay? Um, but today, I do not even think that it exists as a group, as you so call. So why is Codeo and NCC saying parties, uh, groups on both sides of the divide should be dissolved? Yeah, I think probably, I would imagine that um, they would want to be seen not as just condemning one particular political party, but sending out uh, a note of caution to all political parties. But if, if you do not have these people, as you say, then their stance is illogical. Yeah, it's not an, an issue of necessarily um, uh, it being illogical, because within uh, every political party, there are some groups that, on their own, unconsciously, you know, um, come to the fore in the defense. They become extremely very passionate about the party ideology to protect the party and etc. You know, but with the, that of the MPP, they were consciously formed as militia groups. My brother, you and I were in this country uh, a few years back when there was this report of um, South African uh, former South, South African Marines, you know, having been brought in here to train train um, young men heavily built young men belonging to the NPP or hired by the NPP, you know, to, in, 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 in handling weapons and protecting the party and et cetera, because they, they felt, the party felt that they don't have enough trust in the police that they are even working with today. Before that, we heard reports about Serbians who were also brought in, paid, brought in, to come and train NPP, you remember the, uh, the former chairman of the NPP, Mr. Polafoku, having come out to allude to these issues and, and claimed that one of the reasons why he had a, 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 challenge, a challenge with uh, the, the current president was because of things like that. You know? So these were conscious efforts. So, I mean, under the NDC, we never had these things. The reason for which we can proudly say that peace was a hallmark of the reign of the NDC-led administration. Is there peace in the NDC right now? Judging from what is going, what is going on in the media, so many people have spoken. Uh, Mr. Kumbo has spoken, called for early elections, uh, early Congress. Uh, Dr. Spio Gabra has called for 
the, the need for the NDC to be, a broken NDC to be fixed. You have an action movement group, led uh, one of the leaders being Kujo Hamanya, who says your party has got to focus on rebuilding. Is it a bit not hypocritical for you to be talking about the MPP when your own house is burning? <laughs> I am talking about Ghana. The context in which I um, um, situated these issues of vigilante groups is about Ghana, security of, uh, of this country. Because clearly the actions of these people are virtually targeted at ordinary Ghanaians because you've heard stories about how vehicles of ordinary people were hijacked uh, from them, uh, keys collected, some b assaulted. We've heard of how people, um, uh, these groups, especially the invincible forces, haven't taken over state institutions forcefully, you know, um, um, uh, making those who previously were employed unemployed. <laughs> but they're I only mean, repeating a cycle that uh, took place in 2009 when your team came in, and they're also, also taking inspiration from what happened to, to 2001. So we're not going to even go there, but I want yeah, to focus but, but, but on... But David, that, 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 that will also I'll, not be I'll, very true, I'll, the, I'll way, focus the, the on way you your put party. it. The I'll, way you, I'll, yeah, I'll, but before you proceed I want to, to focus, focus on, on my your party, party yes. I just want to indicate mm -hmm. that we have never had a situation mm -hmm. during the reign of the NDC where the United Nations, you know, will officially come out to express concern and worry about what is, about happening, what is happening in Ghana. It's so, so clearly, it's, 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 unprecedented. it's unprecedented. But is it not a welcome diversion from your troubles? The, uh, the Delta Force action is almost like a manna from heaven because it allows the public attention to be diverted away from what is happening, what is, is essentially a power grab um, within the NDC. No, you see, when you follow political history, in Africa especially, and in Ghana in particular, you realize that what you're talking about is no, it's nothing new. It's no story. Because political parties in the process, especially in opposition, have always had these kind of challenges. So what is happening in your party is normal? It's normal. It's normal with every political party. You see, it is just an issue of disagreement, mm. OK? And an issue of others expressing their democratic feelings. I understand perfectly. Yes. Who, who, is, who leads the NDC now? Who leads the NDC is the chairman of the, of the party. Which is Mr. Uh, uh, Kofi Potofi. OK, so there's going to be a meeting today, a press conference today at 3 p.m. Yeah, uh, I, I'm aware of that. What's on the agenda? Well, I can't tell you because I'm no longer a national executive a member of the party. Fine, but you are a member of the party. I am you, a you, member of the party. And you have links party. with those who are national executives right now. They can tell you. Oh, well, I mean, clearly. Um, uh, Kafui, why, even if I knew what is on the menu, mm. why would I sit on set to announce that to the world when I'm not supposed to do that? We, we, <laughs> our leadership mm -hmm. is going to hold a meeting today mm -hmm. to discuss the forward march of our, part, uh, of our political party in order to be able to situate ourselves very well to um, um, uh, um, regain power in 2020. I mean, it would be very immature and infantile on my part to sit on national television to say, oh, they are going to discuss A, B, C, and D. And I will not be strategic enough then. <laughs> what would be the, the, the possible uh, issues? Possible issue, obviously, will be to discuss the forward march of the party to discuss the challenges that the party is going through now because we believe strongly that challenges definitely must come. Challenges uh, come to make you a better person, a better entity, a better group. And without challenges, you cannot become a champion. So we will discuss the various challenges that the party um, um, is going through. You know, how do we deal strategically with these challenges, you know, and make those things that we see as threats, you know, uh, an advantage. You know, and, and how we can turn our weaknesses into opportunities in order to be able to advance forward, you know, and, and, and let the Ghanaian people know that they made a big mistake in voting out the NDC and bringing in the NPP, judging from the three months um, um, uh, governance ship of the NPP. Were you part of the uh, minority delegation that went to visit uh, President uh, Rawlings, former President Rawlings recently? Coincidentally, I wasn't. In fact, we all were to have been there. But unfortunately on that day, the chief, Togbi 
Joachim Akolache of Keji, my hometown, was being um, coronated. So um, I had to be at that coronation. The reason for which I wasn't at that uh, meeting, I obviously loved to be there, but I sent a word to the founder, mm -hmm. the reasons why I couldn't be there. Mm -hmm. So you associate uh, yourself entirely with the de delegation that went to see Absolutely. the founder? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, what do you make of some people in your party who believe that the founder that you just mentioned was really the cause of your defeat at the election because he refused to endorse the former president and apart from the Cape Coast event, he wasn't seen at any of the public functions. He declined to say even who he had voted for, and he said he was waiting for the election before he would make his, 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 his pronouncements. Yeah, Kafi, I think that um, humans as we are, belonging to various groupings, we come, we join these groups with various traits and various characters and attitudes and behaviors. Some are reflective, some are very emotional and passionate, and um, some will speak without reflection, others will have to do that with sober, deep reflection. Is he responsible for your defeat at the election? I cannot say that any individual was responsible for the defeat of the NDC. I would say that all of us were responsible for the defeat of the NDC. But after all... Was it a good campaign? You are a marketing man, you are an advertising man, you are a PR man, yeah. you are a journalist. Did anybody tap your experience in, in the, in, in, from your experience you in see, marketing this campaign? Kafi, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a short story before you proceed. I'm sure you are a Christian. You might have read about the man called Ahitophel, who it was said in the Bible during the days of David that when he spoke, it was like God himself speaking. Okay? Ahitophel at a point thought that David had lost it because of his many errors. And he pitched camp with his son Absalom, who I just talked about a while ago, what happened at the end of the day? The wisdom and the counsel of Ahitophel became foolishness. When, you see, the kingdoms are given by God. We must accept that as a people. It doesn't matter how strategic, how intelligent, and how knowledgeable you are, how you can maneuver your way in order to be able to achieve some result. The result before you will achieve it must be sanctioned by God. That's what I believe. So, so the defeat was sanctioned by God? Of course. If God has not sanctioned it for a purpose, for a reason, you know, we wouldn't be where we are. And again, God will allow you to go through some situations in order to teach you some lessons. So the NDC is being punished divinely? Not necessarily being punished divinely. The wisdom of God, we, uh, 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 are like mysteries sometimes to you and I. We cannot understand it. Okay? Now, probably the Ghanaian people were complaining so much about, oh, NDC, the young people want jobs, and et cetera, without necessarily um, considering the fact that the peace the nation had was so awesome. You know, so God probably wants to say, okay, let me let these people know that, and let them judge between the two. Okay, and so <laughs> the NDC was taken out of power, and then the NPP walks into power, and then they exhibit their true nature and character, which was actually uh, not lost on us, even when they were in opposition. Because if you recall, one Mr. Kofi Kumsen, owner of the, the Ghanaian Chronicle, ever said he cannot sleep with both eyes shut should our current president, Nana Akufuado, become president of Ghana. Who you have graded 20% for the past 95 days. Of course, 20%. And I've been charitable. You know why? The 20% I, 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 um, um, I, I awarded him was even based on some policy initiative that bears resemblance to an assurance. For instance, I would also say that this fight against Galamse, you know, though we see a, 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 a media collaboration with other civil society groups. We see the Minister of um, uh, Lands and Forestry very much involved in it. And we also see how they are doing all they can to defy uh, the Chinese who are trying to intimidate us. 
you know, and uh, in, because a lot of the nationals are involved in this. So, yes, those are the issues that I consider as good, mm -hmm. good efforts. But you see, it doesn't matter what you do in terms of putting in place uh, uh, the, an apt policy and all, when you cannot maintain the peace. When there is no peace, all your efforts okay. don't amount to anything. All right. I, I want to wrap this quickly by just coming back to your house, uh, Parliament. So we, we hear reports of divisions amongst the, the minority. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, when I hear that, I get amazed. You know, because we as the minority in Parliament, we sit, we meet, we strategize. How do we ensure value for money? How do we ensure that the, uh, those in government today do what is right? How do we hold their feet to the fire in the interest of the Ghanaian people? So your minority in parliament is we, united? We, you see... How do you speak to... What do you say about the supposed uh, division between the, the honorable members of parliament uh, um, for... So, so Ayariga and uh, Muntaka? There obviously we once... Uh, once a while there will obviously be, you know, some disagreement on one matter or the other, one issue or the other. The bribery scandal actually showed that they were not on the same page. Yeah, that's what I'm saying that, look, you see, you're talking about bribery, the alleged bribery scandal. I prefer to put it that way. You know, I mean, sometimes our actions may not be in sync. Mm -hmm. and may not be on the same platform. Mm -hmm. Okay? But that does not mean that we are divided. So there's unity? Of course there's unity, but divergence of opinions. Okay, I, 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 I grant you that. Um, quickly, when was the last time you spoke with uh, President Mahama? Well, um, I wouldn't say that I have had that direct interaction with him uh, since we, we left office. Uh, we had a meeting. He organized some meeting um, for us, I think, um, a month ago. Mm. I was at that meeting, mm. you know. Do you miss his leadership? I miss him in some respects. I miss him in some respects. Oh. You see, we had a very affable president. Mm. We have a president who was approachable, and we had a president who um, will listen to, to you, but maybe taking on board what you said is another thing. But he failed the national exam. Should you do a reset in 2020? And I'm saying that. Should Look, he? You see, President Muhammad did not fail. He, he the lost. NDC failed. Okay, so should, President uh, Muhammad did not lose him? the election. Would you, the NDC would, lost Would you sponsor him to come back? Would you be behind the voices of those who say, look, come back and rewrite that exam in 2020? And I'm saying that that is in the hands. That lies squarely in the bosom of the national delegates of the NDC. Fantastic. It's a, it's, it's a fact. But what is your view, Mr. Kwashigan? But of course, there are views of mine that I cannot even uh, discuss with you one on one, not even yeah. uh, and not yeah. not, if, not in public, not even one on, on one on May one. May I suggest that you are not brave enough to support Mr. Mahama, no, your no, former no. president? No, 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 no. You are wrong. You are absolutely wrong, Kafi. Must I tell you who I'm going to vote for on the day of election? If I because ask you, uh, uh, well, I can ask you, and if you of answer, course. yes. You if see, not. and and Sam, we must not prejudge situations and matters. Because in prejudging, you create an insecure position and uh, situation. And then again, I believe in a certain maxim that says, you do not expose your babies before giants. Okay. If you do that, they will crash them. Do you want him to come back? If, if, if the NDC as a body wants him to come back, yes, he will come back. Okay. But an individual, just me, cannot say he should come back and he will come back. No. I hear you. Mr. Kwashika, you sound very religious. Um, are you going to the ministry? Well, of course, I've, I've always been in the ministry mm -hmm. since my days in GST Stakradi. Okay. And um, uh, I've been an evangelist. I've been director of uh, um, um, evangelism okay. once upon a time All right. at the Assemblies of God Church in Teshin Lungwa. Okay. You know, I've come a long way. All right. Yeah. Okay. I've been a lay preacher, okay. and I still do that once okay. a while when I get the opportunity. Okay. It's just that the politics, obviously, had the clouded things. Yes. And, uh, but it's not coming back now that you're in opposition. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. Even government. You know, when you, you ask, are... just check from party headquarters. They I'll, will tell you I'll do that, my checks. Uh, Richard Koshiga is like a pastor. <laughs> and stuff I'll like do that. my checks. And even in parliament, okay. public accounts. All right. Ajima Men will say, well, Pastor Koshiga okay. should pray okay. for okay. us. All right. Uh, finally, 
in the event that the NEC says, uh, or your, your party does not choose Mr. Mahama, who would be your choice? <laughs> Story is same, Kafi. How can I tell you who will be my choice? How can I even determine who are those who are going to express interest in uh, wanting to lead a party? Okay. Because the names that have been dangled sometimes... Harry Sometimes, Andrew, that's sometimes one fine. Sometimes the names have been put out there on social media by some mischievous individuals. Okay. You know, right. Before you say Jack, <laughs> you know, they put your, your picture there, <laughs> you know, and then the whole world say, hey, the uh, man wants to be president. Uh, maybe you want to be president yourself. Myself? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, <laughs> I'd like to say, may the Lord be with you. Amen. Kapi, thank you very Amen. much. My and name is Kapi Day with the Honorable Member of Parliament for the Keta constituency, right next to my constituency, which is Anglo. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Kapi. Okay.